Hello everyone! Welcome to the most important video if you want to really understand how to get rid of your acne. More important than getting to know different products, testing them out, comparing them, is just knowing what really goes on on your skin to give rise to those pimples that we hate so much. Once we know that, it will be much easier and much more simplified to get to know how to target so, them. I'm going to list the different factors that give rise to acne. The first one are hormonal factors. The second one are the excessive sebum production in our sebaceous glands. The third one is the uh, growth of a bacteria called Cutibacterium acnes in our pores, which are full of sebum, and keratinocytes, which is the fourth factor, hyperkeratosis, which means dead cell accumulation in our pores. So if we target those four steps, we'll be closer to getting rid of our acne. So how does the process of acne start? Well, acne normally starts to flare in, uh, in our teenage years, at the start of our teenage years, when we are around 12, 13 years old. And this happens because something we call adrenarchy happens, which just means that the androgen hormone levels in our body start increasing. Androgen hormones are what we uh, normally in the street call masculine hormones, but that they are actually present in both men and women. These androgenic hormones have a direct effect on our sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are um, more present in some parts of the body than in others. They are more developed in our face, in our upper chest and in our backs. And that's why we normally have acne in those locations. Sebaceous glands are actually a component of something we call pilosebaceous unit because they are attached to a hair producing follicle. The hair follicle and the sebaceous gland come together in this pilosebaceous unit. And the sebaceous gland becomes excited by these androgen hormones, let's say, and it starts working too much and not so, so well. I'm going to list the different factors that give rise to acne. The first one are hormonal factors. The second one are the excessive sebum production in our sebaceous glands. The third one is the uh, growth of a bacteria called Cutibacterium acnes in our pores, which are full of sebum and keratinocytes, which is the fourth factor, hyperkeratosis, which means dead cell accumulation in our pores. So if we target those four steps, we'll be closer to getting rid of our acne. So how does the process of acne start? Well, acne normally starts to flare in, uh, in our teenage years, at the start of our teenage years, when we are around 12, 13 years old. And this happens because something we call adrenarchy happens, which just means that the androgen hormone levels in our body start increasing. Androgen hormones are what we uh, normally in the street call masculine hormones, but that they are actually present in both men and women. These androgenic hormones have a direct effect on our sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are um, more present in some parts of the body than in others. They are more developed in our face, in our upper chest and in our backs. And that's why we normally have acne in those locations. Sebaceous glands are actually a component of something we call pilosebaceous unit because they are attached to a hair producing follicle. The hair follicle and the sebaceous gland come together in this pilosebaceous unit. And the sebaceous gland becomes excited by these androgen hormones, let's say, and it starts working too much and not so well. It produces more sebum than it should. This excessive sebum production clogs the pores. And the fact that the pore is clogged and food of sebum makes it easy for a bacteria we have on our pores, which used to be called Propionibacterium acnes and is now called Cutibacterium acnes, to grow in there. It grows in there and it feeds with our sebum. The growth of this bacteria gives rise to inflammation and it um, actually in the end causes the rupture of the sebaceous, sebaceous gland, giving rise to a very strong inflammation that uh, creates an immunological response in our body 
bringing many inflammatory cells to the pore and causing those red inflamed pimples that we get when we have a really big acne lesion. So it's a kind of cascade as you see. First, we have increased androgen production or sometimes androgen production is normal, but we have an alteration in which our sebaceous glands or our skin responds um, with more enthusiasm than it should, let's say it like that, to these androgens. So an overproduction or, of androgens on, or an over response to a normal dose of androgens. Then the excessive sebum production in our pores and the clogging of our pores. Pores don't actually just get clogged because of sebum production. They also get clogged because in people with acne, we normally have what we call abnormal keratinization, which just means that uh, the renewal of our, the outer layers of our skin doesn't work properly and dead, skins get, uh, dead skin cells get accumulated in our pores. So our pores get clogged because we have too many dead skin cells and too much sebum. In these clogged pores, Propionibacterium acnes lives happily, um, proliferates and eats um, as it pleases and it causes inflammation and so inflammatory cells come in and they uh, create these red inflamed pimples that we hate. So I also wanted to mention that acne lesions or the pimples that we get can be different as you may have noticed. We have uh, white comedones black comedones or closed and open comedones and inflamed skin lesions. You uh, may have, if you don't have a very uh, severe or developed acne, uh, some white pimples that are small, that are not red or painful and that are a result of the initial stages of this process of uh, acne generation. When just a bit of sebum and some uh, dead skin cells become accumulated in our pores, the pore gets clogged but it, does, it doesn't get very dilated because it's not very full of substance yet. And what we see when that happens and the bacteria hasn't grown and inflamed the pore as much is what we uh, normally call in the streets a white pimple or what we call a closed comedone in dermatology. A closed comedone, a white comedone or a white pimple. When this process um, grows more and more sebum and dead skin cells get trapped in our skin, we have a dilated pore. This dilated pore has a keratin, melanin, lipids on its surface that become oxidized. Because they become oxidized at the contact with the outside medium, they become uh, dark or black and that's why we get black heads, black pimples or open comedones. And at last, as we said, if Propionibacterium or Cutibacterium acnes grows as it pleases and it causes inflammation, we get red pimples, very inflamed lesions. We can even get things like cysts or very deep nodules that can, when they heal, lead to scarring because they cause greater rupture and inflammation during their development on our skin. So now that we understand the different uh, steps in the generation of acne, we may understand that to target acne properly, we, get, uh, we need to do different things. First, we need to control androgen production. This isn't something that we approach uh, in very young teenagers. It's something that we normally approach in the treatment of acne in adult women because uh, when a woman in its um, late 20s or 30s still has acne, especially if it's severe and especially if it uh, is associated to other signs such as um, excessive hair growth in, um, in their faces or uh, hair loss on their scalp or obesity or irregular periods, we may have to run some blood tests to make sure that they don't have a source in their body that is producing too much uh, androgen hormones. Because we may be facing a disease which is called polycystic ovarian syndrome. 
which um, is actually an endocrinological disease which uh, affects the skin in um, in the sense that it uh, makes uh, acne develop in adult women, it makes hair fall, it makes hair growth in, thin in places where we don't want it to grow, like our face or our chest, but it also has some uh, more um, severe medical implications like obesity, cardiovascular risk, resistance to insulin and diabetes. So uh, when we see a woman that has acne in her late 20s or 30s and that has all, uh, some of those other signs associated, we have to run blood tests and we have to make sure that um, we get the source of this excessive androgen production. In some other cases, adult women with acne have excessive androgen production or have excessive response to those androgens but mm, don't have an underlying disease and they just need a medication that controls that excessive response to androgens, which may be the contraceptive pill. Not all the contraceptive uh, pills are as, uh, as effective as each other to uh, control acne, but um, we can uh, normally in general say that the most modern ones are appropriate to control acne but you should always consult your dermatologist to know if you, the one you're using, if you're using contraception, is adequate to control your acne. The ones that combine ethinyl estradiol, which is an estrogen, with a new progestin, which is a progesterone derivative that the combined pills have, normally control acne. But if you use an, a pill or a contraceptive um, a method that only involves only involves progestin derivatives then it may worsen your acne so you should always check with your dermatologist to see if you're using an appropriate uh, contraception method for your skin there are more treatments that you can that we can use in adult women to uh, target these hormonal factors which are drugs like spironolactone which is actually a drug that is most commonly used as a di diuretic, which, um, which uh, doesn't have anything to do with acne, but in, in fact, it is a androgen receptor inhibitor and it does contribute to reducing this response to androgens. As for clogged pores, we need to use uh, things that are comedolytic or keratolytic which means that they exfoliate the outer layers of our skin to get rid of those um, closures on our pores. The main keratolytics or comedolytics that we use for acne are topical retinoids such as tretinoin, tasaratin or adapalin and benzoyl peroxide. We may use this in combination because benzoyl peroxide as well as topical antibiotics also has the property of being antimicrobial, which means that it stops the growth of Cudibacterium acnes in our skin. So it has a double effect and may be used on its own, on washes, on in or in lotions, or it may be used in combination with a topical antibiotic or with a topical retinoid to increase the comedolytic or keratolytic or exfoliating effect. And to uh, stop the growth of Propionibacterium or Cutibacterium acnes, we may use, as I said, benzoyl peroxide or topical antibiotics. As for excessive sebum production, it's not something that is normally specifically targeted in uh, the most common acne treatments, but an ingredient that works uh, quite well as a sebum uh, secretion regulator is niacinamide, which is an ingredient that also has anti-inflammatory uh, properties and that may make it an ally when using uh, some of their products in acne treatment such as retinoids or benzoyl peroxide that may be irritating so it's a good ingredient to take into account in your acne fighting routine another sebum regulating ingredient is zinc and you may find zinc in many of the moisturizers that are adequate for uh, for acne prone skin because it has a kind of drying and anti-inflammatory effect that is uh, that we search for in these cases. So I hope that you have understood how uh, acne is produced 
and I hope this uh, lets you understand better what you should do to target it on your skin. I will make another video making some sample routines for uh, treat the treatment or of acne to uh, make you understand better the practical steps that you need to take, what's necessary and what isn't, because sometimes we over treat our, our skin. We are so keen on getting rid of those pimples that we actually make our skin worse. So I will make a video specifically talking about the steps that we should follow in our routine. But this was the baseline that I wanted you to really understand so that we can all uh, make better decisions when treating our acne. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my Dermisphere. Bye!